Hi, we're Mike and Ashley from joyfullygrowingblog.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to paint the interior walls of an RV. We get asked all the time how to paint interior walls after redoing our first RV a couple of years ago. And the key really isn't what kind of paint you use, it's all about the prep. We're going to show you the exact process that we use. Let's go ahead and get started. The first step is sanding the walls. We'll be using this DeWalt 5 inch random orbital sander, but just about any sander will work. Once you've done your initial sanding over the entire wall, specifically focusing on the nail holes, then you're going to take wood filler and fill in the holes. So today we're using Pro Bond Wood Filler by Elmer's. You can use any wood filler that should do the job. And then once the wood filler is in place over the nail holes, you're going to go back and sand that out to where it's nice and smooth for a smooth finish. RV wall panels are made with a vinyl covering that's really similar to wallpaper, but it's actually really difficult to get paint to stick to it. That's why it's super important to use TSP. We don't recommend trying to remove the vinyl covering because it works really good when you sandpaper and clean with TSP. This is a pretty harsh chemical, so you really want to avoid getting it on your skin. Make sure and wear long sleeves, safety glasses, and gloves. What you'll need for this step is a bucket that's at least two gallons and some large sponges. We'll just be following the directions on the box. It calls for a half cup of TSP dissolved in two gallons of hot water. What you want to do is take your large sponge and dip it in the bucket with TSP and start washing down the walls. Make sure to scrub the walls really good and then we'll be coming back later with a bucket of just plain water to rinse. After you've applied TSP, once all the walls are dried, you can apply silicone. We'll be using this acrylic fast drying DAP brand. You can see here that I've already applied this bead of caulking. In some places, it's just easier to use caulk instead of a trim piece. The next step before we start spraying primer is to get everything taped off really good. We'll be using this pre-taped masking film, which is a really cool product. It makes the process go really quickly. We'll be taping off all the floors and all the windows. Everything's taped off, it's time for primer. We got a little too excited and started priming before recording this, but that's okay. I wanna to talk to you guys a little bit about the primer that we're using and why it's so important for this step when we're painting RV walls. So the primer is a gripper primer, that's important. It's called a bonding primer. There's a couple different brands out there. We've used Kills um, before, that was what we used on our last trailer, worked great. This time we're using Zinser. We've heard really great things, so we thought we'd try it out on this RV, and so far it's working great. The reason reason why you want to use a bonding primer when painting RV walls is because it's specifically designed to stick to things that don't usually take primer very well. Um, so walls with wallpaper on them, wood furniture, bonding primer is a great option for cabinets as well. Anything with a glossy surface. Today we're using a paint sprayer which works really well with big open areas like this living space that we're doing today. But you can also apply paint on RV walls using a brush and roller as well. That's probably what we're going to do in the smaller bedroom and bathroom area. The paint sprayer that we're using is the Graco Magnum. We can link it for you below. We've had great results with the sprayer. We used it on our last RV and highly recommend it. I'm gonna grab the camera and record Mike spraying the wall behind me so you can kind of see his technique and he can explain exactly what he's doing. The main goal with the paint sprayer is to try and get the paint applied as evenly as possible. So you really have to try hard to be very steady with the spray gun. 
Another thing to keep in mind is that you need to be moving the spray gun before you pull the spray trigger. If you pull the trigger and then start moving the gun, it's already too late. You're going to end up with paint that pools up and starts dripping. I usually end up doing two light coats of primer and then two coats of paint as well. I've found that when you try and do too heavy of a coat, you almost always end up getting a problem spot or two that ends up dripping, and that's a huge pain to deal with. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you found this tutorial helpful. We have more information over on our blog. We will link that below as well as any of the supplies that we used in this video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos on our fifth wheel renovation. Thank you.